logistic to transport those gorillas is complex and complicated. Kind of the theme of our whole project has been how hard could that be? Because it's wild animals, we have to, to go quite fast and not having them under stress. It was really a, a, a choreography and it's a very complex place to work. In. This is a border that has seen a lot of conflict. Armies have marched in both directions, refugee waves have fled in both directions until quite recently, and so now we had a, a border crossing. It was six cars, 15 people, six gorillas crossing. From building the facility here in a remote area of Congo to actually transporting the gorillas from Rwanda to this site has taken a cast of hundreds of people. We're hauling in our whole team, so I mean, there's gonna be multiple veterinarians all the way along the route. So in theory, nothing should go wrong. It's never been the mission of either Diane Fossey or the Mountain Girl Veterinary Project to, to look after orphans. And for a long time, orphans didn't exist. I mean, it was odd. And I'm not sure what started it back up. But I assume that it was like people back then were saying, you know, if these crazy Mazungus come over and pay $250 to see them, imagine how much they would pay to own one. In the last year alone, we received three gorillas uh, that show that poaching is still going on and actually perhaps even increasing in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. One of the main threats is poaching for bushmeat, but it seems that um, it's a trend to have often an infant gorilla or baby gorilla as a pet. The babies are too small, so rather than try to eat them, they would sell them to someone that wanted, often they're used as like um, a mascot. The grouse gorilla has the unfortunate luck of being less known than the mountain gorillas. And we sometimes refer to it as the, the lost gorilla or the, or the unknown gorilla. But unfortunately, they will also be soon in the news more because as their numbers begin to decline, we will probably hear a lot more about them. So these gorillas are orphans because uh, their families have been poached. They have been seized by authorities. And um, if they come from Rwanda, it's not because they have been seized in Rwanda. They have been seized in Congo. But those gorillas helped to socialize a mountain alone gorilla female. Everything was devoted towards the mountain gorilla. And so rather than move the mountain gorilla into an a little bit unnatural situation. We brought the other ones over and now the Grauerais are moving back into their their native DRC into a very nice situation. The shortest time they stay tranquilized, the best it is for them. So it's um, very important that IFO uh, committed in uh, providing the funds to make that move by helicopter. So it's the quickest way and the safest way to get those animals in the Gray Center. When I saw the helicopter come over the hill and start hovering above the facility, I thought I would cry. It was a very emotional experience. I think it was emotional for everybody. Uh, I, I felt, I didn't feel anything until that minute. Really, I was just so concentrated on everything working. I was worried that something could have gone wrong and I was, didn't want to jinx it. Rip the going. Come on. Rachel, grab it all.
It'll be bittersweet. These animals, we've been looking after some of them up to six years. We've watched them grow, and and yet, you know, we're going. We know that they're going to a much bigger and and better place, and that they're going to be in the right country, and just everything's correcting itself to where it should be. And they're one step closer to possible release into the wild. So, so that's pretty cool. Grower's gorillas are found nowhere else in the world except right here in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So they are very special. And um, the recent census suggests that there may be less than 5,000 gorillas left total, Grower's gorillas. I think the prognosis for, for all great apes is still extremely guarded, extremely guarded. I mean, you can say, oh, there's 125 to 150,000 western lowland gorillas, but you have to look at they're going down very, very quickly. These animals are an important part of that gene pool, and that's why the goal is to reintroduce them when they're a little bit older back to the wild so that they can help continue their species. It's almost a perfect storm because you have this population that's highly endangered, very slow reproducing in this tiny, very defined habitat with no buffer zones. And you have a, a species that's very susceptible to human diseases. Then you have the highest density of people in Africa surrounding them, making an average of a dollar a day with very little infrastructure for health or education. And so it's, it's just, you take sort of every conservation theme and it's sort of magnified to the, you know, to the highest level here. It's really now that we can start working toward the future of rehabilitation. We've been building grace, we've been moving animals, but now we can rehabilitate animals. We have conservation education projects going around in the communities so people know about the gorillas. And I'm told everyone in this whole region knows these gorillas are coming home. Thank you.